We got uh, personal finance. Yep. Call the order. Transportation. Transportation. Oh, transportation there too. What do you got this time? Road expansion, huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, the school field not campaign with that. Yeah. Woodfield. Woodfield, thank you. All right. I think you are the treasurer now, right? I am. See anything yes. outstanding? I did not. I came in and reviewed the checks off. So well, that's what I'm talking, the checks in, in general. Okay. And I can't imagine we'll have any issue ever on checks because we have such redundancies in place now, whereas previously we did not. And not the that we needed to, let's put it that way. So it should be just a go through. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's interesting to look at the large numbers on the check to verify. You look and say, oh, what are we paying that kind of money to that person for? And it just kind of tweaks uh, your suspicion sometimes just to ask questions in general. My name, she went through and looked at every mm -hmm. check. She came in the district. Every check? Mm -hmm. Wow. So if That's I have any questions, I'll ask them. Good. The only thing I'd still like to see when we get a chance. Is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, right. I completely I forgot feel about bad it. Even asking. Um, just that summary. The, uh, just showing my vendor the total we've paid out for the year. I'm sorry. See sorry. if anybody jumps yeah, out as paying an inordinate amount for paper or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good move. Copies. Yeah. All right, anybody, any questions on that one? None? Let's move on. Okay, expenses and revenues are the other way around should go into revenues and expenses. Anything jumping on you, Chris? I think we're in really good shape. We're end of May is about 88% through the fiscal year, and we're at about 65, close to 66 expenditure. So that, that's looking good. Um, and then the final payments, as far as aid payments and those types of things should be trickling in this month, so it should, we should be close to 100% of that, over 100% as far as our What's your anticipated uh, uh, underbalance expenditure push to fund balance? About 100, or excuse me, about 1.2 right now. 1.2, did that include that extra 100 some thousand from the it state? Yeah. Okay. Good. That'll give us a little bit of room for breathing. All right. So, anybody any questions on that one? All right. Here we go. Let's move on. Exit interview process. Now, I'm not quite sure why this made it. I, I, I'm sure why this made it on here. Uh, I defer to Bob to let him put it on there. But in general, I would not have had this on here. I'll state that. I don't believe it's the board's position to review the employees of the district. So, I don't know your thoughts. I mean, I like the idea of the exit interviews and that you can look for patterns or any information that's being shared there. So, I do hope that that practice will continue um, to occur. Yeah, well, I think we've always had an exit interview. But the board having exit interviews with employees. I, I mean, I think Denise was doing a fine job with them. Is she continuing to do that? Sure. Okay. And why was that change? I, I just felt we needed to change the process. So there will be exit interviews, but the process will be different. So what will that look like? The employees will be invited to meet with Kathy and me. And then are there like specific questions like there were with Denise? And there, there will be questions that are asked. Yeah. And then as a board, we'll be given, will we be given the, the information I'll there? I'll meet with the board and discuss the, the, the people coming with you. If there's something that jumps out of you. You don't want something saying, oh yeah, Sue left and Sue thought everything was great. Do you want a piece of paper saying that? I'm okay either way. Just okay. so we get that information from Sue. Mm -hmm. um, just, I just, I guess I, I just have a concern regarding, I mean, you guys are someone who evaluates employees and those kinds of things, so I wonder if someone who's a more neutral party like Denise would serve other people. I think this is something, I, I guess I'm in agreement with um, what Dan had said. This is something the administration should handle, and we'll be more than happy to talk with you about individual cases. Yeah, I mean, at this point here, so Denise has been doing them, but you don't have direct review over the teachers, per se. The administrators of the building are reviewing the teachers on a reoccurring basis. Right. So, in fact, I mean, Chris wouldn't be reviewing the teachers on a recurring basis. Nobody decides, you know, um, 
like the um, merit pay or those kinds of things that influence. Um, that. Said well, pay. but you guys do as board members. Yeah. Yeah. You come to us with recommendations right. regarding the yeah. merit pay. But that's based upon but that's what based the administrators from each building turn in. So it would just be yeah, my preference question to have from, on a neutral party. Question from the new guy, was the old process not working? I mean, if didn't have any, Denise, because I mean, she's considered kind of like the HR person yeah. that handles that type of thing. No, one person thought that it wasn't. That's why she emailed Bob, that's why it's on there. And I don't necessarily, I don't give way to that at all. Oh, and I don't agree that yeah. the board should be doing it. I, yeah. I think that I think somebody should be doing it. Should be doing it. But I also don't want it to be an issue where you know you have somebody, uh, a superior, doing it where somebody may not feel comfortable really explaining why they're leaving. I think that's sometimes why companies have you know the HR department does it, and you go to HR and you know, yeah. do your exit interview, and you. Know, I would think. I just wondered if the building would know before it even makes it to a Chris or Kathy what's going on with that person leaving in the first place. I was just curious. Because okay. if, if you have somebody leaving in yours, typically you know why they're leaving. You've discussed stuff with them. They don't just out of blue say, oh, I'm leaving. Oh, i got to go interview with Cliff and Kathy. That would be a completely out of the blue thing. Um, I don't, uh, blue. Unless you have, to, you have the two special ed aides leave, right? I think you could have an out of the blue situation that could yeah, possibly or take place. Yeah. But uh, it wouldn't be an out of the blue that because they're leaving because Chris and Kathy now are going to interview them. I guess the two don't go hand in hand. I mean, right now for a small company on yours, even don't you interview everybody leaves, or at least talk to them. Yeah. Right. Right, but kind of bigger than a small company here. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I was just curious because I was just wondering. I haven't heard the reason. Yeah, we had a process in place and thought we changed it. I just didn't hear why. Yeah. So. I don't think it doesn't bug me either way as long as somebody's doing an exit interview. Just ask you questions. Because unfortunately, on some of these exit interviews, you can you take with a grain of salt, you know? I know. I just, I guess I'm concerned. I feel, you know, if you've said before, you know, 2 to 3% of turnover is normal or typical. But well, I it's bigger this year at every school. Yeah. High schools has people flying off too. Yeah. I don't think it's every yeah, school. I would like to see, you know, I, something is sticking out, but, you know. We'll use that one who just gave a, a exit interview us last, last year that was really not too good, and then calls up this year and says, "You have any openings?" I found out it's a lot better by you than where I am. And yeah, but her interview was, you know, you guys are bad. I don't want to ever be back. And all of a sudden, you know, less than a year later, if you got any openings, I'd like to apply. And you know, would they be uh, afraid to talk to them? They aren't going to be their bosses anymore. That's their parting shot. Yeah. Doesn't bug me. I think I just leave the administration to do however they're going to do it. I think we can just keep evaluating that process and then find a way yeah. that we can get yeah. that information. And I would, I would hope that they might be a little more forthcoming with these people saying, you know, this is what I've seen, this is why I'm leaving, you know. I think they'd be more forthcoming with the neutral party, yeah. but that's I just hope. my opinion. Okay, so I'm flexible on that. All right. Well, you want to move on then? Mm -hmm. Discussion on capital project funding. Uh, two pieces I want to talk to you about are the, the bullet above the exit interview piece, which is about the fund balance allocation. Um, Mary and I will come with recommendations um, for action in July, just so you know, um, as far as what allocation is going to go to Fund 73. We're considering making the allocation to Fund 39 to lessen the debt um, load next year. Um, should we assign some money for 4K? Should we assign some, we're going to have to assign money for tech. I was going to say for the computers, yeah. yeah. No. Um, should we assign more money for new events? Yeah, I'll then so. be looking at whatever was in the budget on tech. I mean, right. what's our ongoing baseline on tech? Yeah. Their budget was pretty big this year because you had all those new servers and stuff. So I'd like really to see what the tech budget is then. Sure. So, so what, what's the 73? Is that the uh, allocated? Oh, OPEP. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what's the. Um, Allocated. I mean, it's just general fund allocated at that point, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But you have that segment that is the balance of that one. Yeah, we do. Okay. I mean, I don't know off the top of my head right now, but because whenever we've pre-funded, you know, administrators and teachers and that right, type right. Of thing, so. right. So I mean, we need to move something over there. But yep. I'd be more interested in in long-term capital projects on the buildings 
what's coming up. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we did the roof on this one here. We should be set on Evergreen for quite a while. I don't see other than... Boilers. Yeah. Uh, the boilers are yeah, 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 yeah. over 25 years, years old. I know it. So... Talking a lot of trail side next year. But, that being the case, um, I want to see out of building the grounds something on the resealing on this parking lot here. And while we're at it, we should be resealing this whole path right here just in case something happened, right? We're resealing that this summer out here. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Including the driveway. Yes. Okay, so I just want to give you a heads up about that. There'll be a recommendation coming um, to the full board as far as the allocation of 73. Of the, uh, surplus from, from the general fund. Gotcha. So you got that. Mm -hmm. As far as the capital project funding, um, about four weeks ago, um, a vendor had connected with Canon, and a representative from the same company connected with Ken Quad on the same day, unbeknownst to one another. And what this company does is, um, there's a... Let me clarify something there. Unbeknownst to Canon and Ken, or unbeknownst to the two guys from the company. Oh, I'm sure that was not. A <laughs> I <it> doesn't <laughs> sound like an just, onslaught <laughs> sideways one to me. I'm know. telling you, the way it was shared with okay. me. They didn't use the word unbeknownst, but the point is, is that <laughs> they didn't realize that um, mm -hmm. there was conversation. Anyway, so the, what this company does is there is a um, a provision in the revenue limit um, calculation mm -hmm. for school boards and districts to. Um, um, raise the levy, mm -hmm. okay, without going to referendum for energy saving types of projects. Smart guys. Okay. So the point is, is you can do that as a board at a meeting and basically raise the levy um, without having to go to referendum for certain projects. Well, this is about the third or fourth time that. I've been approached by different companies mm -hmm. about this, and so I had shared with them, understand it doesn't apply to us because we are under levying. For example, yeah. last year we under levied by over a million dollars, mm -hmm. we under levied. So the point is, is that the board can adjust the levy or <laughs> just through the natural process well, without yeah. having to exercise the, the, limit. the extra the extra provision in, uh, mm -hmm. in the revenue limit. How would that help you anyways if you're at limit? Other than you're going to pay them whatever you're going above your limit, why would it help the school district? Basically, it, it helps the school district that it doesn't have to go to a vote. Mm -hmm. Oh, I understand that part. Okay. But if you, let's say, raise your levy by a million dollars, sure. But you pay them a million dollars. Right. What did it help you to do anything? Basically, what you're do, what they are doing them is they are like the contract manager of the project or the, the master projects. And so what I was going to tell you is that these comp these different vendors hire, uh, they come in and do facility studies. So they'll bring mm -hmm. in architects and engineers and all gotcha. that type of stuff. And then they come back to you with a list of things. So if you're like a MPS with a bunch of rundown schools, you can increase your energy savings by mm -hmm. remodeling right. this and that and right. exceed your levy. And so the, the provision basically, gotcha. like, like in Darley, like Fox River's case, mm -hmm. you know, we could look at, we know the plumbing fixtures are aging, the electrical pieces, the gym lights, those types of things would be very attractive as far as such a project. Um, when I explained to them, though, that we have under lobby for several years now. Yeah, it's probably still um, We are an exception, especially to the amount mm -hmm. that we're under levying. But what, what the gentleman proposed or just talked about on, on the table was, well, if you still have capital projects and you want to combine them together, we're more than willing to serve as the contract manager. So I said I would bring that to the committee <laughs> for discussion purposes if you would like them to come in and give you a presentation to provide more details about this whole process. Not really? No. Okay. That's easy, huh? Okay. They're just a smart vendor that needs, knows how to go at it all, and they've read the right. law, and they know how to get around it with larger districts that are already strapped. Right. Well, we've already done thermal lighting buildings. and everything. We've gotten energy efficient yeah. boilers in Fox River already. Right. So slowly. The only thing we have to do is switch. This is the building that sucks all the energy. The new uh, fluorescents on everywhere. Right. Yes. Well, yeah. Well, the Fox River gym is probably the biggest piece mm -hmm. related to that. Yeah. Just so you know. And I think that should be in the P and G. Yeah. Allocating for that. Yeah. 
So that's what I would be looking at. But it's amazing how they let loose on getting rid of the balls. Oh, we're going to get rid of T12s, really? T12s are so little. Well, so. from what I understand, the, um, even the ballast replacement, too, yeah, with pictures and really stuff, is, is, is a little bit more challenging. So. Yeah. Last piece I want to talk to you about tonight um, relates to expanding the bus route or adding a bus route over at Woodfield. At the beginning of this school year that just concluded, so the 13 14 school year, ridership at Woodfield. Um, had grown unexpectedly, and it really felt that the buses were much more cramped, even though we had the same quantity of buses as we did last year. Um, so, how do you attribute that? Just more students riding? Yeah. Less being dropped off by Burns? So, as, as the, so we, we communicate this to Dawson, and um, in the last couple of months, I had spoken with them as far as, you know, for sure if we add 4K, we're going to need to add a route because that's just going to be more oh, kids yeah. mm -hmm. regardless. But I said, would you also do a ridership census a couple of times unannounced to kids just to see what the ridership numbers are about? Because if we, if we need to add a route in um, next year already without even adding 4K, does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. I wanted to know now <laughs> rather than right. August because the cost is between forty and forty five thousand dollars just to, to add that road in. Mm -hmm. And so what I wanted to do is um, get these numbers in front of you as far as what that looks like. The route that is probably the most cramped based on the information I have, and then I'll let Shirley speak to this, is one of the routes that drives into Rochester. Um, so I guess I just wanted to have that background information as well. Shirley, is there anything that you wanted to add or contribute as far as the piece that, that you mentioned? Um, well, tour shows a lot more PM riders. Yeah, and that, and that is a challenge um, as students on the bus. So winter was probably most noticeable when the buses are that filled. Um, getting three students in a seat, um, that was often a concern of the bus company, that students would be out of their seat uh, and because they had to crowd close together. Then when they have their backpacks and they have, they're carrying their musical instruments, which they have some days in a week. So we have a, yeah, really crowded buses. Um, and through this school year, uh, Fox River has not um, any students um, as late bus riders have not been able to come over. Um, that's been a concern because there's not um, additional room and there's been, that was at the beginning of school when they would first come over and the buses would be more filled. Um, they would have to either go to another bus or some of the kids would have to be reassigned to another bus in order to um, get those kids to come on so it was filled to capacity. Um, some days it's a concern, as you see by the number. Some days it's a really high concern. Yeah. And then another day it is, it is not. So it depends on the day and time. I'm glad to see we're actually utilizing the bus. Yeah. You know, I subdivision starts beginning of the year, everybody's on it. Middle of the year, nobody rides it. Mm -hmm. Or very few. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather see us actually utilizing it and have a need. So the history is, is um, shortly after Sally had left, um, Julie Johnson from s and mm -hmm. called and said, you know, Chris, I think we can probably consolidate the, the Woodfield routes. Okay. And so at that point, we subtracted a route out of Woodfield. So that was about well, three years ago. <clears throat> and this year especially, um, the, the feedback from some, some parents, and, and also from Shirley, just an, an ongoing piece of the bus was much more, much more crowded. Do they do a mass drop-off down in Rochester? Like like stop on no, one not side like, of well, they do, but not not in the way that it used to be. Um, they used to have um, larger drop-offs, <clears throat> but now, <clears throat> excuse me, because there was so much um, concern about the, the big drop-offs, 
um, and especially as kids would wait in the morning for the bus, mm -hmm. the kids would be in the street and we would have so many um, concerns there where we were sending law enforcement on many occasions to control bus stops where kids were in the street and there would be um, 15 to 25 kids at a bus stop and that was one of the things that they listened to when we talked about the bus routes is that we wouldn't have these massive um, drop off spots. Yes, because of just nobody being there often to supervise, so they make smaller drop offs. Hmm. Looking at the numbers, I don't think we need to add that route. Well, there was a huge concern of Fox River when I had to send the email home to Woodfield par uh, parents that their kids could not stay after school. So yeah. Trailside would get busing. Evergreen, if there were bus, could get busing, but no trails. I know Woodfield students could stay after school. Well, they could stay after school, but they, 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 ride they could ride a bus. Right. Thank you. I mean, yeah. They, yeah. Because you, you would know what they would be to capacity. Exactly. Right. right. So we had to take that. Yeah. And you insisted. Mm -hmm. You send somebody over there, and the kid could be left. Sure. And then we have to call tomorrow. You send them, and they could get on a bus. So we had to just do a final. Right. It's prudent. I would say yeah. Yeah. I mean, what you did seems prudent. Mm -hmm. So you're saying you want to add one, or are you just going to keep an eye on it? I would say we need to one. add. I'm looking I at brought it numbers. to you for a decision because I'm indifferent. And the, and the reason why I'm indifferent is I want to be sensitive because the principal is saying it's overcrowded, there are behavior problems because there's more kids on the bus. I also heard from Fox River parents based on what Darling just explained that, Which I can see that, that second row to go home um, limited some of those kids. <clears throat> more so the parents and the kids yeah. as far as um, getting after school, after school services. But the flip of it is, is the data with some of the, you know, the bus company feels that they can do it. <laughs> um, but the bus is going to be full. Mm -hmm. is there that's, that's, the, that's the tricky part. So A reason? Is it just their fleet size that like that one bus is considerably bigger than you know, the 83 students versus the 72 student bus? What drives that? Just what they decide they want to use for us, or the, just what they have available? I remember saying that they only have a couple that are of that capacity. If I nice. recall correctly, the 83, I'm you, I think you were in on that meeting. I, I'm sorry to point you out, no. but I thought that they had said that the 83 seat capacity buses are no longer in production. Correct. And so, mm. a few years back, I know Julie bought a bunch of them. I was just yeah, you finished. Because they were so getting rid of them. A few years ago. Julie, she bought like five. Yeah, I, th I thought she so was. I was going to say that. Some of the <laughs> See a couple bigger buses. But well, yeah, I'm sure. That, I mean, Dawson's huge. Now they can buy secondary buses, but I think the bus company thinks they can do it. I don't see a reason to put it on right now. I'd say we wait till the 4K discussion is done to figure out whether we need it or not. I'd say that and now looking at those numbers and hearing that our Fox River students who are Woodfield, you know, are resident areas, they can't stay for the after school activities. I think that that's. And knowing the gear that kids come to school with and have to sit through to a seat, I would, I would oh, say to say, add that route. Yeah, especially because of the Fox River for students not being able to get a ride home after they stay there. Mm -hmm. Tracing strain instruments also. Yeah. This year. The orchestra numbers are up. I put that in mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, but you don't want to take a, uh, anything cello or above on the well, bus, even right? Even a clarinet case has well, the, 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 the bass is, you're right, the bass Trumpet is cases. Cello and bass is Sex a, cases. Not low. The three in a seat is getting kind of crowded, and you have yeah. every seat with three in a seat. Yes. Mm -hmm. And every especially seat during the winter seat. with yep. snowmobile suits and everything else, yeah, and then their backpacks, and Johnny's going to push Susie, and Susie's going to punch Johnny in the face, and all of a sudden they were... That's exactly right. And we're not that tall over here. Okay, well, I'm going to get into some smaller house. buses and get a deal out of them. Maybe they need a large capacity bus somewhere else. How many it's the cost of the driver and the cost of the gas to determine the cost of the bus. Yeah, you know, I mean, they can charge us by whatever bus it is. People we went with the original. They could run a little smaller capacity. Proposal and the was capacity breakdowns are on the buses. I don't think the charges got capacity. I thought this were was different mm -hmm. capacity buses. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. A few. Mm -hmm. All right. Well. Come so, to the board. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. That's the route that goes into Rochester. Well, that's the one that's overcrowded. I don't know. How There's two going to Rochester yeah. now. They divided it so that they didn't um, 
they would have a one, and now they have two. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn. What do you guys know? How are we going to discuss how we're funding for it? Um, oh, you wanted to go over the projection numbers. Well, I think the other big question that though too was if we're going to do fund balance or levy. I don't. I think it's going to make a difference as to what the numbers come back on this one over here. Do we wait a month to do next month? Right. No, it's August. Well, it's going to come back as whatever the numbers Chris comes up with as to what he thinks is going to be the cost going right. to outsource. Yeah. Well, you just the next one. Make sure you look at the office. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I mean, I don't think it really makes a difference at that point until we get to that point. But if you're asking me what I vote to take it on a tax basis, I would say no. I mean, we've got, we're pushing money to the fund balance. I agree. I just. Right. 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 I think I brought that up when we we'll talked about this in the. Uh, I would say, yeah, you take it off. Meeting the way through. And I think we all did that. I think that yeah. to help simplify yeah. whenever you're running these numbers, I don't think I that we're kind of focusing on one. So we're, you know, hammering out the way we're going to do it. I'm sure it'll make your life easier than having to do it two ways every time you run the numbers. Yeah. And then just that we're all on the same page with, with what the final bottom. Well, I don't think you know exactly because we don't know exactly how many FTEs or anything. We're well, getting close. Not I think exactly. right now we're close and everything. So I think that um, you won't know exactly until you're done with it. You can have a good guess. True. And whether there's going to be any money available from the state in the next biennium. That's true. <laughs> well, you got our motions? Yeah. 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 Or magically how you come up with an extra 150000 or whatever they send to you. Sure. Uh, next week I'll be looking for a board direction. There's a family that um, attends St. Thomas um, that are actually not residents of the district but want to access Fox River's math program. Ooh. So we'll have to, I'll look for direction from you if you just want to. Uh, 